Good afternoon. We continue to learn more about yesterday's school shooting in Roswell. Today, state police said the seventh grade suspect from Barendo Middle School had planned the attack. News 13's Cole Miller is live in Roswell with the very latest. Cole. Yeah, Kim, state police say their investigation is making ground and coming to a wrap. And like you said, that 12 year old shooter planned the whole thing. But what we still don't know is why it's been a grueling day and a half on students, teachers, parents and investigators here at Barendo Middle School, where Mason Campbell opened fire in the school's gym yesterday morning. Even though they say Campbell planned the attack, they will not give specifics on exactly what led them to believe that. State police say the 12 year old fired three shots. One hit the gym ceiling, another hit the floor, and the third hit an 11 year old boy and a 13 year old girl. State police say Campbell was in close range when he pulled the trigger. We believe that the distance that weapon uh, when fired at the two uh, Young individuals that were, were struck was about 12 to 15 feet in distance. Now, state police are still not releasing a motive, but they do say that Campbell or they do believe that Campbell was not targeting anyone in particular. Kim, back to you. OK, thanks, Cole. Now, police also revealed today that Campbell had only three shotgun shells with him, all of which he fired in that gym. They also say the shotgun is the only weapon he brought with him to the school. They confirm he got the gun from his house and cut off the stock himself to conceal it. The 11 year old boy who was shot yesterday remains in critical condition at a Lubbock hospital. Out of respect for his family, we are not naming him. Hospital officials tell us he has undergone two surgeries, but his condition remains the same. He was hit in his face and neck with that 20 gauge bird shot, which contained dozens of pellets. The other victim, 13 year old Kendall Sanders, is doing much better. She had surgery yesterday to repair her shoulder where she received a wound from that shotgun shells. She is listed in satisfactory condition and, according to hospital officials, could be released from that hospital as early as today. We also continue to learn more about the suspect, 12 year old Mason Campbell. Those who knew him and his family say they never would have expected something like this from him. He played basketball, he played baseball. I'm pretty sure he was involved in Boy Scouts. Just a regular family, you know, a, you know, a parents trying to raise their boys and just a regular family. Just shocking, you know, it's just shocking to me. Everyone in Roswell is still asking why a question police, as we said, are still working to answer. Along with Mason's family, they asked for their privacy, but on one of their Facebook pages, they wrote heartbroken, praying God is in charge in all situations. Community members say they feel for them too. I can't imagine what they're going through. I, you know, I don't think that I would treat them any differently than I ever have because you know, not only have these the injured kids, you know, their I, I'm, my heart goes out to them, but it goes out to the family of the shooter too because everybody's involved, you know, everybody involved, it's awful. The family has hired attorney Bob Gorens to represent Mason. He was supposed to send a statement today. At this point, he has not. Mason is in Albuquerque at a psychiatric hospital today. He was brought here after a short court hearing yesterday. At this point, he has not been formally charged. The DA's office says this case is complex and will take some time. Meanwhile, classes at Barendo Middle School are scheduled to resume tomorrow. The crisis intervention team will be there to meet those students. Today, teachers, staff and the superintendent all work together all day to make sure they're ready. The superintendent says each teacher will basically become a counselor tomorrow, ready to deal with any issues the children have. They certainly don't expect this to be an easy fix. The team will be there in the coming days and weeks. Witnesses say yesterday's shooting happened in a span of about 10 seconds. But in that time, teachers and staff were already jumping into action, taking the steps outlined in the active shooter training they've attended. School officials and police say it was critical yesterday in getting the situation under control quickly. At this point, nearly all Roswell schools have gone through that training. Well, the sheriff's department says it did meet some resistance at first. Every school eventually wanted to do it, and yesterday it proved crucial. The staff and, and the teachers out there knew exactly what to do. Uh, you know, that's stuff that stays fresh in your mind, and uh, they're to be commended for the, way, the actions they took. The training in Roswell schools started several years ago, but really increased in the last couple years. 
The shooting in Roswell sent shockwaves across the state. Parents left wondering how to talk to their kids and reassure them that their school is safe. Today, police presence was increased at many schools far away from Roswell. News 13's Krista Gutierrez is here with that. And Kim, despite the shooting being more than 200 miles away, extra officers were seen at some metro schools this morning and even in Santa Fe. It's kind of unbelievable. I was pretty shocked. Like, how could this happen? You never expect it to come from a small community and the kids all know each other. But it did, leaving Roswell parents stunned. Last night, parents across the state tried to reassure their children school is still a safe place this morning. Parents would see more officers around schools in Rio Rancho. Rio Rancho police say the extra patrols were to ease the fears of the kids who heard about the Roswell shooting, letting them know they're safe. The officer presence lets them know that we are aware of the situation and we're prepared to respond in the event anything happens. Santa Fe Public Schools upped their security around schools too. The district notified parents Santa Fe police and school security would be making extra patrols. Both Santa Fe schools and Rio Rancho say there was a second reason for the extra security. Sometimes there, there are incidents of copycat stuff going on after an incident like what happened in Roswell the other day. And um, having the extra police presence in and around the schools I think is good for everybody. Officer presence is going to hopefully, first of all, be a deterrent. The parents we talk to say security at schools is welcome. Unfortunately, I don't know how you can control this, this, this kind of violence that's been happening in the schools. Uh, I think any kind of presence, any kind of effort that the schools are trying to do to educate people and try to make things safer for our children is, is a good thing. Now, an APS spokesperson says they did not have extra security patrols today, but noted that Albuquerque schools do have security and officer presence every day. Back to you. Okay, thanks, Crystal. Now, some districts we spoke with said it was up to the principal and the teachers if they would discuss the shooting in the classrooms. APS says they would not discuss the shooting with the students because parents made requests after the Sandy Hook shooting that those discussions be left to them. Be sure to stay with KRQE News 13 and KRQE.com as we continue to learn much more. We'll have the very latest coming up at 530, including the 911 calls that describe yesterday's terrifying scene.